On today's episode of the Infinite Loop Show, our heroes find themselves knee deep in anniversaries. Rumors, call girls, and more rumors. We got zombies, we got STDs, we got Ninja Turtles. Wait, what? We don't have any of those. All of that and more on the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number 13. I'm Michael Gaines. And I am Casey Coughlin. And, yeah, I'm Three Take Gaines. That's okay. We made it to episode 13. <laughs> sorry, game on. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh, too, too soon? soon? I'm sorry. Oh. You said it, not me. Call right. me Schwood. Okay. <laughs> So the <laughs> one thing that I saw just before we started recording today is that Phil Schiller thinks that Instagram jumped the shark when it released its uh, Android version. What do you think of this? Jump the shark is an iOS only app. I know. How <laughs> dare they? How dare they expand? Uh, this is uh, quite obnoxious, I think. Well, I mean, it's nice to have those apps. I mean, I, I can't lie. I can't. You know, say I wasn't a little bit bummed when it wasn't just an iPhone only party anymore. Mm -hmm. And it really was iPhone only. It wasn't even iPad for it still isn't. I mean, there's third party ones that will run it, but Instagram itself does not make it a universal app. And so then they started, uh, they released the Android version. And then it's like, oh, you're going to let those kids in the party, too? <laughs> All right. Guess I'm going home. You know, I I recently took my iPhone app, which um, which was bug-free. They said it was ready to go. And I converted it to an iPad app. And it only took me like 12 hours to do it. And of those 12 hours, I, I think a few of, a few hours were just figuring out how to do the new kind of um, uh, the pop-over uh, dialogue, uh, pop-over oh, view for uh -huh. um, for the iPad, and that, and that was it. I mean, it was nothing. So why there's no iPad version of the in of Instagram? I don't know. The Instagram. Yeah, no, um, the Instagram on the interwebs. Um, most of the libraries, I believe, are the same, with the exception of, like you said, the pop-over menu. Mm -hmm. um, is really one of the very few that's like ipad only that would be different yeah i don't think that instagram jumped the shark it's going to be a long time before an app like that jumps the shark people are I mean, more people are using it now obviously because there's an android version yeah. and no and really you should still be happy that it started on ios and then expanded out because it was so popular mm -hmm. not that it started on android and then i guess we'll make an ios version <laughs> it still says something that they went to ios first and it was in so they had so much demand mm -hmm. that they, they they expanded out. I yeah. mean, I don't think they'll they'll go any more. I don't think Windows Phone will get it. Maybe, but mm, I don't know because now that Facebook owns them, you don't know what's going to happen. That's because true. Microsoft has a stake in Facebook. Oh, you're right. You're totally right. Mm -hmm. So we Shoot. might see Instagram for. Uh, for Windows Phone. Now, now they've jumped. The so shark. for those three of you now that have Windows phones, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, but hey, it's okay because the Apple II had a 35th birthday this week. I can't believe it's been 35 years. I know. Somebody's almost 40. <laughs> what happens when a computer <laughs> hits middle age? I don't know. <laughs> they start, they start, you know, bringing on new or hipper gadgets and hanging out with, uh, you know, the iPads and the. <laughs> I tell you, there are still people that use their Apple Twos on a regular basis. I, I did some reading when what? you posted. Where yeah. are they living in caves too? <laughs> no, well, no. It's just like these people that still use their Atari 800s and their Atari STs and their Apple Twos or Apple Threes. They just mm -hmm. find a way to use them still. I know that there's a Sometimes. web server for an Atari 800. I was actually thinking about writing a web server for an Atari 800. Just okay. for the hell do of you it. Need, do you need a 56K modem to get to this web server? No, there are actually ways that you can connect the uh, the Atari what? 800 directly to the internet. Mm -hmm. There that's are ways you could do Yeah. So I can have like an Atari 800 web server because that's what we should run the website off of. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Run it off of floppy. Screw. Look, here's the website. Yeah. 
<laughs> Screw fiber. We're going backwards, people. <laughs> WordPress for Atari 800. <laughs> yeah. You thought that an 8 bit Google Maps was impressive. Just do wait. <laughs> Apple is improving iTunes security by asking people a bunch of pointless questions about who they are just to make sure they are who they are. Yeah. Has this happened to you? I haven't gotten this yet. No. But then again, I haven't put my password in for a few weeks. I was weeks. just going to say, does this? do you not hit this unless A, you forget your password or B, you're starting a new account? Um, from what I've heard, it's if you type your password in wrong. You know what? Let me. Oh, I don't have anything to do. To well, well, yeah, you know, I can. I can buy an album. Sometimes then it locks you out, and then. And then it asks me. And it, well, for, yeah, right. Anytime you make a purchase, you have to put it in, and if you do it wrong so many times, then it locks you out. Right. So then you would have to do the forgot my password thing, hmm. and then you'd probably hit these new requirements but okay if okay. you're uber like me and never forget your password then you're probably not gonna hit this no, i don't forget my password either no no not for this mm -hmm. for other things yes because passwords <laughs> it used to be just oh use a special character and an uppercase letter and you'll be fine now it's like well you can't do this and you can't do that minimum and eight characters minimum one eight characters and, uh, one uh, character one uppercase one lowercase yeah and i forgot a whole bunch of stuff already can't be, you know, more than three characters similar to your last password. All my MMO passwords are different. Actually, uh, th that brings me to sort of maybe a, a side point. Do you use one password? On no, your Mac? I was just gonna say this would be a great plug for one password. I used it when I was using Leopard, and then I stopped using it. Uh, why? You know why? Because when I was when I moved over to Snow Leopard, mm -hmm. I moved over to Snow Leopard temporarily I, I was only doing it because i was working on a project last year and it was my development environment and then i would switch back to leopard it was it was done because i had a, you know you know how when you when you work on a brand new operating system and you have to transfer all your crap over well i didn't want to do that i don't want to that's transfer what my, time machine is for i don't use time machine <gasps> stone the heathen <laughs> yeah i'm a bad mackie <laughs> anyway um either that or you're so not an early adopter no uh, well, not even a late adopter <laughs> I, no i just never really found the, the need for it anyway my point is is that uh there are a couple of apps that didn't make the cut transferring over one of them was one password and the other one was the whole microsoft office suite for the mac because mm, yeah. uh, i wanted to get away from it i, I just no, got tired yeah. of using it i've never used it and felt that i needed it mm -hmm. up until um, I I started my current job, mm -hmm. and now I I have to have it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't just need one app; I need all of them. Yeah. So um, but yeah um, there I I don't think everybody needs it. I think yeah. most people can probably get away with iWork or even Open Office. Yeah. Well, Anyways. I've been doing fine with iWork for the last few months, and I've been fine with it. And I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm usually not this far behind with operating systems, but I'm going to try out Lion. And the reason why is because my development environment was under Snow Leopard, and it still is. Yeah, and so yeah. I was stuck You're with Snow Leopard. You're pretty far behind, dude. Well, now that I'm running the show, I can do whatever I want. I go to Mountain now Lion at the end of the summer. Now you're a big boss man. Yeah, that's right. Hey, how do you feel about 3D? I love 3D. Well, sort of, kind of. Well, apparently Apple might be loving 3D as well, or at least this new job posting says so. I tell you something, 3D, it's gimmicky still, yeah. but it's better now than it was years ago. I get, it's better now than the 50s, the, sure. Yeah, but even, even I have some 3D movies on Laserdisc with the red green. Oh, Laserdiscs? Laserdiscs. Yeah, I don't <laughs> don't use them anymore, but I, I really? had them. That's surprising. <laughs> anyway, um, no, it, 3D I think is, yeah. Until they get 3D without glasses, it's it's gonna feel gimmicky, no matter what. Would you watch How I Met Your Mother in 3D? I mean, does does it really help? Nope. Nope. I would no. I would never watch like TV or or like serial episodic shows in 3D. Mm -hmm. You know, it feel it. It's bad enough. And I, I think there's a, a enough of, of an following in in what I'm about to say here, but it feels like even for a movie, 
that's just about hitting my limits. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I mean, I could all okay, fine. If I have to, I'll sit through an hour and a half to three hour movie wearing these ginormous goggles that <laughs> give me a headache and a neck ache because I can't use my peripherals anymore. I gotta freaking look all around. Yeah. Now, um, but if I had to do that, you know, every night, every week, we get annoying. For, for an episodic show, I'm sorry. No. You don't it's need it. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I don't I don't know um what Apple's going to do with it, but I've been I've been hearing different things like they're going to use 3D for the experience on the iPad or you're going to be able to do something on the monitors <laughs> with you know OS yeah. 10 or something like that. So, we'll we'll see what happens with that. But uh this job tell us about the job posting. What does that say specifically? Um uh, well, I mean, it, it's not going to say it doesn't say anything more specific than we've already kind of talked about. It's a a 3D uh, artist kind of interface designer job posting. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really go into detail, but it just kind of says, hey, you know, just there's there's these sites that just post based on, like sites that post based on patents, mm-hmm. sites that post just based on Apple job postings as if they are some sort of foreshadowing to the future. And I Mm -hmm. guess in a way you can say they are, but Apple tests so many different avenues Mm -hmm. so thoroughly, and they only choose one. You know, when they were testing, or when they were developing the iPad, Mm -hmm. they tested and developed iPads in just about every shape and size. Mm -hmm. Only one came into fruition. Yeah. So, I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. People are saying that the Department of Justice isn't going to win their suit against Apple for the whole ebook pricing thing. I don't. And this is what I said last time: is that I don't see them with uh, with a good case. They just don't have one. And as a matter of fact, there's a there's an article here. I'm, I'm referencing the one from Apple Insider. The CEO of Macmillan, he wrote. Uh, he says, "I am Macmillan CEO, and I made a decision to move Macmillan to the Macmillan to the yes, agency model." This model Mm -hmm. i I can't speak today after days of thought and worry i made the decision on january 22nd 2010 a little after 4 a.m on an exercise bike in my basement Mm -hmm. so this is not something that the department of justice is going to win i believe all these companies are saying look we didn't like amazon's model and and it's not even just ebook pricing i've seen other companies um I don't remember what it was. Oh, no, it was. Well, this particular one that I'm referencing was an ebook, but uh, there was a company that makes children's books and they ripped all their books off of Amazon. They said, We're going to sell them ourselves because we don't like Amazon's business model. And we're. Yeah. And it's almost as if Amazon's business model is the right one only because it was the first one. Mm hmm. Um, and it's funny because this is the exact reverse of what Apple did to the music industry when iTunes and the iTunes Music Store came out. Mm-hmm. You know, they did the exact opposite. They did what Amazon did in the beginning. So it's like they they set the rules from the beginning and forced all the music companies to play ball. They're like, we're going to set the prices. It's going to be 99 cents a track. You're going to deal with it or get out. And they dealt with it. They It was hugely successful and everybody benefited. So it's like Amazon went and they saw that and they're like, hey, we can apply that to ebooks. Mm-hmm. They did. Companies started falling in line and then Apple came along, you know, later <laughs> on and said, you know what? We're going to do something else over here. You want to you join our team over yeah. here? Great. If not, great. Mm. Whatever. You don't have to, but you should. Yeah, it's going to be really great in this hot tub over here. <laughs> but you want to play in the little kiddie pool up there with Amazon? Okay, that's cool. We're going to be in the hot tub with the hot chicks over here. Okay, okay, bye. Is that, that's how they did it. It's tr- mm-hmm. true story. True story. Cool story, bro. <laughs> All right. Um, But, yeah, another thing that, uh, and I kind of feel like Steve Jobs would be just rolling in his grave uh. about this, but... Apple and Samsung are uh, looking to sit down and settle their patent disputes. Yep. This whole thing is starting to bug me. Not because Samsung is doing anything against Apple. It's it's the entire patent troll 
it, these these aren't trolls, of course, but but the whole patent issue is just getting yeah. completely out of hand. I think because no, and it's across the board. It's with all tech companies everywhere. Everybody either buys or sells based on the patents. You know, issues flare up, tempers mm-hmm. fly. All because of patents. There, look, in, in some cases, I have to agree with Apple. In some cases, I just think that the whole thing is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, like, for example, the whole slide to lock thing was a big pain in the neck. Yeah. If you remember that. I'm, yeah. a, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to say, well, you know, we decided to have a headphone on our, you know, top left. And, you know, <laughs> it's a patent dispute. We're going after Apple. Really, it's, it's just, it's getting out of hand. Now, in, in the case of Apple and Samsung, Mm-hmm. There are the the patents that they're they're listing are uh, to me they're frivolous. I, but that's just me. This well, is why I I'm mean, not a CEO. You can literally, <laughs> you lit every and because patents hold so much weight and, and like I said, people you know, hire and and fire and go to war based on patents. People are and companies are patenting everything. Yeah, you know, and it's like. The one, the company with the biggest book of paper, like the thickest stack wins. And so you're just filling that book with whatever you can. Yeah. Just whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, so they go to court based on that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, like I said, I think if Steve Jobs was still alive, you know, he was very stubborn, very, just really would not, I think even if he, thought he was wrong on something he would stick to his guns for a good long time oh sure about it until everybody else back down right but tim cook is a very different ceo Mm -hmm. and he's been you know kind of um i don't want to say backpedaling but really turning some stuff around at apple for the better of the company from a business perspective right right that's what i was Um, gonna say yeah doing you know stuff that it it's like Things that Steve would have taken personally and held the company to because he felt like it was a personal affront on him mm-hmm. that may or may not have, you know, cost Apple or would have cost Apple in the future, but he would have done anyways because he takes a lot of stuff personally. Yeah. Uh, Tim Cook doesn't seem to, and thank God. Um, so... <laughs> You know he's he's very business minded and very smart and and kind of, and really running the ship in a different way, but not for not in a bad way. Yeah. Definitely for better. Well, it's not the company that he started for one thing, so he doesn't have that personal feel for the company like Steve does. Did, right. He did. didn't know when they were like in the bottom, you know, rung of the computer industry. Yeah. He wasn't there when Apple was. You know, trying to rub two pennies together. <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another anniversary is BB Edit. Um, Yay! Th- this came a w- just just after we recorded last week's show. It was actually a week ago today. Um, BB Edit is 20 years old, and I still have it, and I still pay for it, and I still love it. Yay, happy birthday, BB Edit. Yeah, I remember using that for... You can God. almost drink. Yeah, <laughs> editing, um, editing my websites on it. I would, oh, God, I edited so much stuff with BB Edit. And it was good because at the time, when I first started using uh, like a Mac, I think it was when I had my Mac 2 SI. Oh. It was around the time that I, I started using it, I think. I don't remember exactly. But um, according to this article on Macworld, uh, Rich Siegel is still the lead developer on the project. I mean, that, yeah. that, that's amazing because in, in a lot is, of... In- he is BB Edit, and he is, for all intents and purposes, bare-bones software. Mm-hmm. It started uh, the uh, the date the, the date of the first uh, instance of BB Edit was dated 2.19 a.m. on Sunday, April 12, 1992. Oh, 92. Yeah. And so uh, it was free at the time. Now we have... Um, there are some other things. We have Text Wrangler. Yeah, I use that. BB, yeah, I use that too. But BB Edit will always be forever one of the, if not the best text editor on the Mac. And we love it. We do. And I think, really, all Mac users, all, all Mac developers know about BB Edit. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, another thing all Mac users know about is our amazingly awesome stock price, <laughs> which for the first time in a long time actually dipped this week. Yeah, it did a lot. It stopped going up for once. <laughs> it lost, uh, what was it, $30? Yeah, and really in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it went down from $610 a, a share to mm-hmm. 580 yeah. So let's all like shed a tear because it's only five hundred and eighty a share. Well, it's, it's but a lot of people are yeah saying that that's foreshadowing you know, that oh Apple can't keep up the momentum they're going to flatline and become a Microsoft. <laughs> well, all right. So it closed today according to this at five hundred and eighty seven. So oh, okay, so it went a little bit up. It went a little bit today. up, but yeah, I mean, everybody knew that it wasn't going to sustain. Well. There were some people, there's some analysts saying it was going to get up to 720. But it could still, I mean. It could still. It, stocks are. We look, still have the, WWDC coming up. That's we exactly still what have I was going this to say. whatever Apple TV display thing going to happen. We have, the and Ivy, we have iPhone 5 coming. We have the still. iPhone 5 coming in October. We've got the Ivy Bridge computers coming. Yeah. Uh, we have a if lot of stuff. If they upgrade the Mac Pro, then I <sighs> don't see why this wouldn't just scream past 700. You're you're killing me, you know that? With the whole Mac I'm Pro thing? I'm only stating the facts, not <laughs> rubbing in the fact that you have an old-ass, broke-ass Mac Pro. <laughs> this broke-ass Mac Pro is running this show. It's a fantastic computer. <laughs> it's the best computer that I know of, besides my own. I love you. I love you. Um, okay. Yeah. So as, there's that. As if Apple was listening to this show a few weeks ago, they announced that Final Cut Pro 10 is actually going to do multi-channel audio editing. Well, this was announced at NAB this week. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying that their list, it's either NAB. The National Association of Broadcasters big ass show in Las Vegas <laughs> that happens every year, or they listen to the Infinite Loop show. Oh well, one or the other. I don't know. It could go <laughs> either way. I was, as I as I said in previous show, I was very upset that uh, there's no well, there's there's there needs to be more multi channel support in the Mac itself, as you know, as if it's not like a redheaded it. stepchild of of the audio devices on the system because. Um, if you don't have a Mac Pro, you don't have an optical output port, and then you have no way of doing 7.1 anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas on Windows machines, this kind of stuff comes standard. So, derp. But <laughs> the fact that uh, Final Cut Pro 10 didn't have multi-channel audio editing, I think is a big problem because I know that there were some TV shows that are edited on on a Mac with Final Cut Pro, or were with Final Cut Pro. And so to, to not have multi-channel audio, I think, is a big problem because you know you want to put surround sound in your in your show and you can't. Come on, it just doesn't seem. I, I don't understand what they were doing with Final Cut Pro 10. This is why I didn't buy it. I'm still using. Well, I can understand version. what they were trying to do, but cutting out seven, you know, not what they should have done was kind of pull out or leave, you know, seven as a as an option and kind of made a better upgrade path to mm-hmm. 10 mm-hmm. but instead of just shutting seven down and then dropping 10 on it and there wasn't like a nice neat bridge you had to first jump off the cliff and then kind of crawl <laughs> back up the other side yeah that's, that's actually a pretty good analogy <laughs> <laughs> that's why i made it and uh hold on my mac just broke no your Mac Pro? No, no, no. My, uh, the, the Mac. <laughs> See, you jinxed my machine. I'm sorry, Mac the Pro. Disk too mean slow to error. Feelings. God, it's I need okay. a new machine. You can do it. I think I can. I think I can. That's how I feel about this Mac sometimes. Oh, I'm gonna I'm get a new sure. machine this year, one way or the other. If no Mac Pros come out at the end, by the end of the year, I'm getting an iMac, an i7 do iMac. It. I'm doing it. Do it. Apple was criticized for backing off support on IPv6. You know, th- this sort of, this is strange. It is. It is because Apple th- this is almost like what they did with Final Cut Pro 10 is that they they put out this amazing product which was uh, the airport yeah. and 
And then they, the, but the new version of uh, Apple's Airport Utility version six, they took uh, out IPv6 out. Uh, they took they IPv6 took out. They took out a lot of stuff. Did, what else did they take out? Um, there was some I don't encryption use it. and security uh, measures and some, if you got really kind of far into the advanced settings, uh, I can't even look because it forced me to upgrade. And so now I don't even have the old one. Um, but there used to be an advanced tab. Like, pretty much the, the normal tab of the old utility mm -hmm. l gave you the same information that the, the new utilities advanced tab gives you. Mm -hmm. So, if you went into the advanced tab of the other the older utility, you got, um, uh, I believe it was buffering and you could kind of limit bandwidth on what's channel and mm -hmm. pick channels um which you can't really do in the the new one okay so i mean well really and, and this is what we said a few shows ago apple seems to be trending towards dumbing down all their not just apps but utilities and everything yeah where everything is really dumbed down really simplified does that worry you well yeah i mean if this was five or six years ago, then I probably wouldn't have noticed, cared, whatever. Mm. Now, now that I'm in that industry, now that I am a power user, now that I do, you know, go into um, the utilities and the the advanced, the advanced oh tabs. the advanced tabs. Yeah. Um, now that you know, I do use that, and I know what it's for, and they take it away, then. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, I, I, I just don't get why Apple would take out something that is emerging. IPv6 is important to a lot of people, and it's been tested. Comcast says that they suggest that you put uh, Apple Airport Utility along a uh, 5.6 alongside 6.0. So you, they they do both work. I did some reading, and what you can do is you you need to install six to do the firmware update for the device but then once you do that you can go back to using 5.6 hmm. so you can do that i just apple apple's doing some weird stuff lately between yeah. uh final cut Pro 10 and, and apple airport utility and some other things with their operating system i'm not quite sure what's going on over there and like who sits at the meeting and says yeah let's take out ipv6 they were they were know. the people they were Maybe, one of the first I mean, companies that it, used it there's, it's very possible that it's still there, and but just obscured. You know, the mm. GUI doesn't show it, but the capability is still there. You Maybe. know what this makes me think, though? Bone up on your bash, kids. That's right. Because we're all going back to Terminal. <laughs> okay. Yay! Shell's the future. No. And you know what else is the future? What? What's the future? Seven-inch iPads. Oh. But I thought Steve said we weren't supposed to have seven-inch iPads. Shh, shh, shh. Oh. Okay. Steve's gone. Steve's gone now. Okay. Now that he now that he's out of the way, we're gonna totally rip out of the seven. way. Listen to you. Just kidding. I love you, Steve. Wow. Um, but it it does make sense. Like it does. It because it uh, never. I mean, it never would have made sense before, and and Skype sucks. Oh, yep. There you are. Now you're back. Hi. <laughs> um, Sorry. Um, so start again so, from making sense because you're uh, you froze. Um, because Skype sucks. Um, because, um, oh, it would probably have never made sense and continue to not make sense had they not released the 11 inch Air. Mm -hmm. And that was on Steve's watch. Mm -hmm. You know, the 13-inch the Air, the original Air, was a gamble. And then it proved to be a success. And so, like all their products that's successful, what do they do next? You expand the line. I, I totally agree with you on that, except... All right, a couple things. One, it looks to me like what they're trying to do is they're trying to go directly against the Kindle Fire and some of the Android tablets yeah. that are out there. Okay, well, that makes sense. 
And in order to do that, you have to compete with them against not just their price point, but their size. Because there are some people out there that say, yeah, I like the seven inch form factor. Now, Steve gets up on stage a couple of years ago and he says, well, you know, you're not supposed to have anything smaller than 9.8 inches. And you know what? I remember when he said that. that I went, really? The form factor helps the price too. You know, you can, you can keep it high quality and uh, retina display. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, but in order to be cheaper than what, if you're going to keep everything the same and go lower on price, what else do you have to do? Yeah, what's it going to be like? Eight hundred by six hundred resolution with Retina display. I mean, well, I- this article saying it's for a seven inch. It's actually going to have the same resolution that the iPad One had. So 10, 24 what? Ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. Okay. Hmm. So that would for a seven inch that would be Retina e resolutionary. Seven even. inch. You know, I'm just sort of like framing it out. Um, yeah, that's what what's seven inch. <laughs> what seven inch would be like? I don't. Know, I guess mm-hmm. it would work, but I'm just mm-hmm. so used to. Um, mm-hmm. What? I'm sorry. It just in my mind, this whole discussion. Yeah, I, I know. Where, yeah, well, that's where your mind. You put your mind back on the show. <laughs> I like Max. Okay, so a seven inch form factor. I could see people liking it. Um, I could see books being read on it, magazines and such. I don't know if I would personally want to go with something that small because I'm so used to using the regular... Stop it. <laughs> I'm so anything. used to using the, the 9.8 inch I, uh, iPad that I, I don't know what... I, you know what it would be good for though? It would be good for maybe trap... What? You're shaking your head no. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. What would... What would you know what? be good for? <sighs> You're such a girl. <laughs> anyway um i would have to probably buy one because i do development on all this stuff so i'd have to try it out make sure that it works but i i just can't see myself pulling away from a 9.8 inch ipad i i don't I, no, I like i like my i like the form factor and i like the size of mine <laughs> as it is um i i went to the trouble of buying a bigger purse to house you know my bigger ipad you know, I mean, why? And and I think I'm, I don't think I'm the only one. I think ever since the first iPad came out, a lot of people kind of, well, early adopters and, and real kind of fans who, who bought iPad 1 mm-hmm. or even 2 and said, okay, I want to be able to carry this around with me all the time. Mm-hmm. What accommodations do I need to make? Mm-hmm. You know, do I need to get a bigger purse? Do I need to start carrying a messenger bag if I'm a guy? Mm-hmm. You know, or, or get a jacket with bigger pockets? I don't know. I'm just trying to guess a what. Purse. But you know, I think pe- there's there's people out there like that that would make the accommodations for the iPad sure. and then now years later they're coming out with a smaller one and people are like oh mm. yeah uh, mm. you see Android people you know pull them out of their back pocket and everything I'm thinking who really puts an Android no. or a tablet yeah. in their back pocket nobody because you get to sit on no. it nobody Fact does that that's just pocket. it's BS nobody really does that if you, you know what if you put an Android or not just an Android but if you put a tablet in your back pocket let exactly. us know because I want to know if you've broken it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I just, now, what I can see, though, I can see, like, um, my leather jacket, I only wear this in the winter, but I wear a denim one in the spring, is, you know, it's, it's got an inside pocket. But I don't think it's seven inches, though. I think it's only, like, four. So I wouldn't even use it in, with that. You can't even get a Galaxy Note in there. What are you doing? Yeah, so we'll see. Ah, you're screwed. All right. Samuel Jackson and Zoe D. Chanel are doing Siri commercials. Awesome. These are interesting. I, I, it, it's funny that Samuel L. Jackson is talking to a phone because he seems too macho of a guy to want to talk to someone named Siri. No, no, and, no. Actually, this makes perfect sense. Why? Because Samuel L. Jackson is the type of person who talks 24-7. <laughs> he talks all the time. He talks for the sake of filling in silence you know, he totally seems like the type of guy who he's at home alone making dinner and he's just talking up a storm to himself. <laughs> you know, nobody's around. He's just really? talking. You think that? So, of course, he's going to talk to his phone. I'm just waiting for him to, like, whip out his phone, hit the button, and then say, get Jurassic Park back online. 
get these M F and snakes, snakes off, off this thing. plane. Yeah. Totally, no. <laughs> That's what I was expecting. Totally. I was expecting some sort of in-joke about snakes or Jurassic Park or something like that. Or one like of his that. movies, yeah. Or something, and, and nothing. Uh, but it was it was, it was was funny. But the, the Zoe Deschanel one uh, is cute. cute. I just yeah. started watching uh, New Girl about two weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, damn, is that show funny. Is it? Yeah. Not as funny as How I Met Your Mother, but it's funny. I yeah. haven't seen it. Yeah, I really like it. But So those are cute. One thing that I must say about Siri, uh, or not just Siri, but Apple uh, uh, commercials, is that they don't actually say, they don't have to say what the product is. Yeah, they say yeah. Siri, but they don't say on the iPhone. They don't even have to say, like, they could leave Siri out and not even, not say anything. Mm -hmm. They could just make a commercial with them talking to their phone. Yep. And you would know. And that's it. That's great. Right. If you buy a Nokia Lumia 900. A what? A Nokia. <laughs> I swear, I'm so happy that I don't buy phones like this anymore. Uh, Nokia Lumia 900. Mm -hmm. You get Russian call girls. Sweet. Okay, so I, there's this commercial in Russia for the Nokia Lumia 900. Nokia.ru. Mm -hmm. And there are these guys you know they're, they get into an elevator by themselves and these girls come in and they start undressing and partying and everything like that and in the elevator good really that's that's what you got to do to cell phone really yeah because no. at&t is playing on what was it 1.5 million uh in sales and buying yeah. all the at&t employees phones so that they could show them off and talk about it that plan totally bombed. Yeah. So apparently, number two on the list <laughs> is Call Girls. Call Girls. That's it. That That's how they're selling their phones over there. I, look, cultural differences aside, I don't think that works. Because really, I mean, look. In sensational, Soviet Russia. Well, sensational uh, commercials, to me, they just never work. Because, well, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to whip out your phone and really, ex do you even think about the Call Girls when you're whipping out the phone? No. No, 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 no. It's not working that way. So I say I no. I don't know. The last time I called a call girl on my phone. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm. I don't think so. <laughs> um, hey, so do you know who Philippe Stark is? No. Who is he? He has no relation to Tony Stark, for one. <laughs> uh... So thanks Wikipedia for mm -hmm. that. No, <laughs> um, he's he's actually a very famous designer. Has designed everything from yachts to eyeglasses to clocks to watches to you name it. He's um, quite a great industrial um, and fashion designer. Mm -hmm. So when the rumor came out that uh, well, it wasn't even a rumor. Philippe in an interview himself said he was partnering with Apple on a revolutionary <laughs> new product. And that the product tech is went on fire. Oh yeah. Everybody just what is it's the TV. It's uh Google Goggles competitor, you know, <laughs> look out, it's whatever, it's an Apple Watch, you know, it's whatever. Um I'm sad to say people it's Steve's yacht. <laughs> That he is. That's it. Working out. Is it revolutionary? I guess. I mean, as revolutionary as a yacht can be. Yeah, I suppose. It still, you know, goes in water. Mm. But everybody, it's funny how everybody was talking about how, oh my God, there's going to be something new designed for Apple. And it's a yacht. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, people were guessing everything under the sun. And I mean, I confess I was excited too. I, you know, who doesn't love, I mean, Apple already has great design. Right. They, hell, they got Johnny Ive in their house. Sure. They already have great design. And then what they're going to collaborate with another great design, only good things can come of this. Yeah. Or a private yacht for this Jobs family. <laughs> One of the two. One of the know. two. And there's another Mac virus in the wild, but maybe not really. 
Oh, good. We were looking at this just before we started recording. You seem to think that this is a variation of the last one of the flashback one, right? It doesn't... I mean, it doesn't say it is. Like, the last few um, from what was... I think it was like August of last year was the earliest one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had one end of last year and then one in January, February. They all were kind of, they were definitely variations on the flashback. It was like flashback K, flashback H. Um, This one is called Backdoor Sap or something. But it uh, takes advantage of the same Java loophole Mm -hmm. that Apple left open for so many months the same loophole that flashback was taking advantage of right and so the latest round the latest two i believe in the last two weeks there's been two software updates Mm -hmm. that apple has pushed down patches and fixes for the java loophole and even gone so far as to make readily available their own standalone malware removal tool Mm -hmm. for this um all of which either fixes or um, provides workarounds for the the Java problem. I believe would pretty much cover this mm-hmm. new virus as well. Okay. There is one last thing that I wanted to mention, and it's not on the list, Casey. I apologize, but you probably saw it. Did you see the rumors that the back of the new iPhone five is going to have something called liquid metal? Oh yeah. Okay. The uh, the thing that Apple paid what was it twenty million dollars to have exclusive rights to? Yeah. It's called liquid metal from what I read because it's supposed to feel like water. It's metal, mm-hmm. uh, nickel, and, and some other things. I think makes titanium. a hell of a sim removal tool. Let me tell you, <laughs> it does. So so this isn't, you know, Robert Patrick is not going to come and personally deliver this to you. This is this is not the Terminator T one thousand. This is just a name. It's liquid metal. It's one word, not two words. Liquid metal, and yeah, it's supposed to be some sort of revolutionary metal. Um, System. Of course, it's revolutionary. I don't know. Of course, I have to. I'd have to see it for myself. But from what I understand, it's supposed to be uh, much different than any kind of metal casing that's out there so mm-hmm. far. So. Yeah. So Apple bought the exclusive rights. Um, they just bought the rights, mm-hmm. mind you. They didn't buy the the company that makes it, right? Um, like they do sometimes. They just bought the rights <laughs> uh, to be able to use this company's products. And up until this point, they did that back in 2010. Up until this point, they all they've made is you know that little kind of sewing needle looking SIM removal tool that you yes. used to get with iPhones. Yes, that's liquid metal. Oh, is it? So up until this, yes, up oh, until okay. this point, that's all that they've made with it. Okay. Um, now the the newer rumors is that this is going to, uh make up either just the back or the entire case of interesting an iphone okay they don't even say like i mean everybody's saying obviously oh if it's an iphone it must be iphone 5 (laughs) um it could very well be 5s 6 you know um but they're they're working on using this as a as a case material since it's much lighter Mm -hmm. um more durable and also very smooth to the touch. Yeah, uh, I guess if if you can lessen the weight of the iPhone four or iPhone five, I know because yeah, this thing is so be freaking heavy. I That's, mean, yeah, seriously, it's not that bad. this thing needs to be a lot lighter. <laughs> I, I hate taking my iPhone out with me; it's so damn heavy. I tell you. Couple of real fast things before we move on. Um, Mountain Lion DP3 is out, but I couldn't find anything new. The only thing that I found were known bugs, and Yay. so. No. I'm sure they're not bugs. They're probably just features. <laughs> and Apple is giving away Snow Leopard to get the last mobile me people yes. onto iCloud. That's very interesting. So if you're a mobile mm-hmm. me user and you're not using Snow they Leopard, you can get it for it free. with you people. <laughs> you can get Snow Leopard for free. Which I think that's a good deal. You can't hang out in the back of the room anymore. That's not right. dancing with anybody. You got to get out there. Get dance of, with other people. Get off of Jaguar. Yeah. And get onto Snow Leopard. Jeez. <laughs> Bunch of slackers. I tell you. Pay for the upgrade for you. Shit. (laughs) All right, let's move on to culture. All right, so I only have one thing that I'm going to mention this week, which is. Very cultured today. Oh, yeah, we are. (laughs) Mm. 
I've been playing with spaces a lot because I have been trying to separate the the work that I do from the clutter that I have on on my daily basis. Like I want to keep just the development frame. Is that what they're called? I think I could call it a space, well, I suppose. But are, okay, so are you talking about on your Snow Leopard uh, yeah. machine, your Lion machine? Snow Leopard. Cause, yeah, because when you say spaces, it makes me think Leopard and Snow Leopard. On Lion, they're totally desktops. Um, okay. I didn't so. know. I didn't. I'll play with it. I'll, I'll boot into Lion later, and I'll I'll give it a shot or Mountain Lion or something. Yeah. I I mean I barely used Spaces previously, but once Lion came out, and um, not only is it much easier to switch between them, mm -hmm. but they really are self-contained and it's just better managed. Yeah. I, I feel like um, it was kind of slow with Snow Leopard and Spaces, but with Lion they're um sandboxed better i guess mm -hmm. to where it doesn't feel like it's nearly as cluttered and bogged down where i can have a, a handful of desktops and, yeah. and different stuff running and organized better mm -hmm. what i what i do is i have all my main stuff on space one and then mm -hmm. i'll move over to space two and i'll launch xcode there and i'll try to keep a bunch of finder folders open in that space the one thing that i find is that i want to keep it there and i can't seem to find a way and i looked at the preferences there doesn't seem to be a way for you to tell the system to always open xcode on that frame or that space so what you can do um, looking at at this here you can have application assignments Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Oh, you know what it was? I was thinking the other way around. I was going to say, I think you can't. I know, I know you can in Lion, but I think you can even with Spaces previously. No, you know what I was saying? I was thinking of something else. Um, well, I was that thinking helps. about keeping app. Like, for example, I would want uh, my Colloquy for IRC to always mm -hmm. be in the same space. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm sorry, not in the same space, in, in all spaces. Mm hmm. That's what I was thinking of. I, I oh, misspoke. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a, a special um, setting to where you can keep something on top yeah. no matter what. So I, I misspoke there. So what you can do is you uh, you hit the plus, you select Colloquy, and then there's a drop-down menu on the right-hand side saying, what space do you want? And you click on every space. Mm -hmm. And that's I misspoke there, so I was wrong. But uh, yeah, you can, you can tell it to put Xcode always in space 2. If you want, mm -hmm. which is I'm I'm doing now, and and so it always works that way. And I guess I just misunderstood the way the menu was working, but that's okay. But uh, <laughs> but this is good because then I can have the, the the biggest problem that I have with with running a whole bunch of different things between development, just my everyday stuff, and doing the podcasting. Th this this desktop is cluttered as hell. And so I want to keep all the self-contained folders just for podcasting in its own space, all the Xcode mm -hmm. stuff in its own space, all the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. stuff in its own space, and do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so th that's sort of what I've been playing with a little bit. But I think it's useful for a lot of people that need to sort of separate their stuff into different rooms. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much, um, I think, what they intended it for, to have separate buckets. Yeah, for um, everything. You can have your your web browser bucket or your, your communication and social media bucket and uh, your homework or work bucket. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to our apps for the week. You're a better dancer than I am. I just sit here and just grin. <laughs> <laughs> And now there's music playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, yeah. so I, very simple. I was looking at the apps that I was I wanted to work with um, for this show, and there's an app that I actually use quite a bit, and it's probably <laughs> one of the smallest apps that are out there. It's it's just called Light, and all it does. I'm going to show this on the video. It just brings up the flash on your iPhone four. That's it. Oh, That's all okay. it does. So if you mm -hmm. need a flashlight, there mm -hmm. you go. There's your flashlight, and, and so it's on my second uh, tab on my iPhone, and I just press it, and it brings up the flash, and I use it if my flashlight's a couple rooms away. I don't want to go to it. I just like whip out the phone, hit the thing, and there it's done. Simple. Yeah. And it's yeah. free. I think it's free. I bought it so many years ago I forgot, but I think it's free. No, it is free because it's ad-supported. <laughs> 
there you go. It's because the ad yeah. just popped up. I'm like, oh, it's, yeah, it's ad supported. Yeah, no, I used to use, um, I don't know if it's the same one or, or something similar. Ever since they, they had the back flash on the back of the iPhone, mm-hmm. um, that became infinitely more useful than the white screen flashlight. And I used to use it all the time in Geek Squad when I was, <laughs> you know, looking behind a receiver or a DVR or whatnot to see connections. Yeah. Right. Um, What's your app? I came across this app this week. I don't even remember where I saw it, but it's called Pathfinder. They just came out with a new version, uh, 6. Mm-hmm. It's not in the Mac App Store, so you have to download it from their website. I think it's like pathfinder.com or something like that. Mm-hmm. If you just Google Pathfinder 6 or Pathfinder for Mac, you'll find it. Um, it's pretty much like the Finder on crack. <laughs> or steroids. So what do you like about it? Because I've been reading nothing but good reviews on this thing. It's fin- I love that it um, everything that you want the finder to do like it, it's like the finder and spotlight combined but mm-hmm. then you also have other functions. You have super sophisticated search um across your entire Mac platform. Mm-hmm. You can tag stuff. Right, I saw that. Uh, files, folders, apps, whatever, you can create tags, so then you can search by tags. So if say you want to you know, create your own kind of custom organization scheme, then you can search based on that. Um, you can open up tabs and different windows within the Finder to kind of compare oh, nice. um, file structures or drag and drop. Um, within the same finder window. Um, there's slide out uh, trays mm-hmm. on both the right, left, and bottom of your finder window uh, that house processes, all the processes running wow. right there with you know little X's next to each of them so you can just one-click kill a process wow. right from the finder. That's nice. Um, then I think one is list of your apps or something else that's running. And then the bottom slide out tray is terminal mm-hmm. right there without having to, you know, launch terminal. It's right there. You can do your command line tools, which like I said earlier, learn your shell and bash kids. That might just be coming. <laughs> it's coming back. It is coming back. Yeah. I saw that you could do things like batch renames and things like that. You mm-hmm. can do some amazing stuff with this. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of automation, a lot of um, just really detailed find and replace mm-hmm. for uh, renaming. Um, just everything that you wanted Finder to do and then some. Yeah. They've yeah. really um, thought of everything. It's fantastic. It's 40 bucks. Does it have a trial? Yeah, I'm running the 30 day trial right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty nice. Does and it, I might just buy it. Does it completely replace the Finder in the sense that no. does it work on top of it or is it an app? It's an app. I real I wish it would replace the Finder or work on top of it, mm. but you have to launch it like an app. Um, if you're running Lion, the good thing, you know, it if you don't quit it, it's not going to quit. Obviously, you know, if you shut down or restart your computer, it'll come back up. Like any other app. Well, here's but. here's a question. Like, if it's supposed to work better than the Finder, if you've got your Finder open and you want to use Pathfinder, yeah. how do you like open a new window? You can't hit Command N and open a new window. You well, you I, have to have it. I have believe it you front. can, but you have to have it on focus, right? right? Like any other app that you know you would do a command, mm-hmm. whatever command on. Yeah. It will work should you have that app in focus. I see. So it's got to be the front the front app. So, yeah. you know, command tab over to Pathfinder and then do your keyboard commands. Um, okay. But, yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Okay. All right. That's going to be it for this show. Casey's got to go to bed because she's running some mud marathon tomorrow or something like that. Uh, there better not be any mud. I think it's just going to be sun and sweat and craziness. Yeah. How, how big is your, uh, your run tomorrow? <laughs> um, so I guess because I'm the newbie, I have the the shortest total mm-hmm. amount to run. So over two days, I'm running a total of like thirteen and a half miles. Wow! Um, that's half a and marathon. that's broken up. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not all together. It's broken up. It's a relay. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we take turns. Um, but some people are running as much as 20 miles wow. combined. So that's almost a marathon. That's amazing. Well, good luck. It's yeah, it's going to be insane. <laughs> I hope I don't die. I, I'm sure you won't. <laughs> All right. If you want to contact us, I am at StarMike on Twitter. Casey is Casey Queso, K-A-C-E-Y-K-A-S-O. Did I get that right? The Casey, not the cheese. The Casey, not the cheese. Uh, you can email us, the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com. Uh, Infinite Loop TV is our Twitter address. And we are on YouTube. We are on Google Plus. We are on We're Facebook. On the book faces. We're all up in your interwebs. <laughs> the book faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening and watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>